The American Old West is filled with tales of adventure, danger, and larger-than-life characters who defined an era. From infamous outlaws and fearless lawmen to unexpected heroes and daring escapades, the Old West has left us with stories that are as incredible as they are unforgettable. In this video, we'll explore 10 remarkable stories from this iconic period in history, shedding light on the true events that shaped the legends of the American frontier. Prepare to be amazed by the wild and untamed spirit of the Old West. Mountain Meadows Massacre The year was 1857, and the desolate landscapes of southern Utah bore witness to one of the most chilling atrocities in American history, the Mountain Meadows Massacre. In a brutal display of violence and savagery, 140 men, women, and children fell victim to a relentless onslaught of gunfire, bludgeoning and stabbing, their lives snuffed out in a harrowing act of bloodshed and betrayal. In the aftermath of the massacre, a shroud of suspicion and blame descended upon the Mormon settlers of the region, with newspapers casting accusatory glances in their direction. Meanwhile, Brigham Young, the influential leader of the Mormon Church, sought to deflect culpability by openly attributing the atrocity to Native American assailants, an assertion refuted by the few survivors, all of whom were children under the age of seven. Indeed, the testimonies of these young survivors painted a damning picture, pointing to the true perpetrators of the massacre, white men of Mormon descent. Compounding the evidence were eyewitness accounts of Mormons flaunting jewelry and clothing plundered from the massacred victims, a stark indictment of the complicity of certain members of the Mormon community in the heinous act. As tensions escalated in the wake of the massacre, President James Buchanan felt compelled to intervene, dispatching a formidable contingent of 12,500 soldiers into Salt Lake City a territory that Brigham Young had defiantly declared as independent from the United States. Faced with the specter of imminent conflict, Young rallied his followers, calling upon them to prepare for a looming showdown between the Mormon Church and the federal government. In a desperate bid to stave off the advancing army, Mormon militias resorted to drastic measures setting fire to the plains to impede the progress of the federal troops, launching attacks on their supply lines, and even resorting to the destruction of strategic fortifications such as Fort Bridger. With winter exacting a heavy toll on the besieged soldiers, President Buchanan ultimately acquiesced to the demands of peace, offering amnesty to the Mormons for all federal offenses, including the grievous crime of murder in exchange for a return to order and tranquility. The Tombstone Thunderbird Photograph On April 26, 1880, a shocking article appeared in the Tombstone, Arizona, newspaper, The Epitaph. The story claimed that two cowboys had encountered a massive bird just outside of town. After shooting it, they brought its enormous body back to Tombstone. The article reported that the creature had an astonishing wingspan of 160 feet, a length of 92 feet, and an 8-foot-long head. According to the description, the bird lacked feathers and instead had smooth skin with wing flaps made of a thick, nearly transparent membrane that bullets could easily penetrate. As we conclude our journey through the story of the old American West, it's evident that the tales of this legendary era continue to captivate and inspire. From the daring exploits of frontier outlaws to the resilience of indigenous tribes. Smallpox In 1837, the fur trade in the vast expanse of the Great Plains unwittingly unleashed a devastating scourge upon the Native American population. Smallpox This insidious disease to which the indigenous peoples had no immunity or recourse for treatment, exacted a catastrophic toll, leaving entire communities decimated and vulnerable to further calamity. 
The arrival of smallpox brought with it unimaginable suffering and despair, as those afflicted with the virus faced a swift and agonizing demise. Victims succumbed to the disease within a matter of hours, their bodies racked with excruciating pain as they fell prey to the merciless grip of the virus. Faced with such unbearable torment, many chose to end their own lives, resorting to knives, guns, or even hurling themselves headfirst off cliffs in a desperate bid to escape the agony. As the epidemic swept across the plains with relentless ferocity, those who sought refuge within their ancestral villages found themselves ensnared in a deadly trap. With no means of halting the spread of the virus, entire communities were rendered defenseless against the inexorable march of disease, their very existence hanging in the balance. In a desperate bid for survival, some Native Americans sought to flee the encroaching epidemic, dispersing into the vast expanses of the plains in search of sanctuary. Yet, even amidst the vastness of the open prairie, the specter of smallpox loomed large, claiming lives with merciless efficiency. The toll exacted by smallpox was staggering, its impact reverberating throughout the annals of history as one of the most devastating disease outbreaks on record. The once thriving Mandan population, numbering 1,800 souls, was reduced to a mere fraction, with fewer than 100 survivors left to bear witness to the tragedy. Similarly, the Hidatsa and Arikara tribes saw their numbers halved within the span of a single season, their communities ravaged by the relentless onslaught of disease and despair. Pueblo Revolt for centuries, Spanish explorers wielded power over the indigenous Pueblo tribes of New Mexico, subjecting them to a regime of oppression and cultural assimilation. Under Spanish rule, the Pueblos were coerced into forsaking their native religions in favor of Christianity, while being compelled to pay tribute to their colonial overlords. The forcible imposition of Spanish authority saw the desecration of Pueblo sacramental objects the expropriation of ancestral lands, and the systematic destruction of indigenous centers of worship. Resistance to Spanish dominion was met with brutal reprisals, as Pueblo individuals who dared to challenge the status quo faced the specter of imprisonment, torture, dismemberment, or even death at the hands of their oppressors. Despite enduring generations of subjugation, the Pueblos harbored a simmering discontent that would ultimately ignite into open rebellion. In the watershed year of 1680, the Pueblos seized upon an opportunity to cast off the shackles of Spanish tyranny, launching a coordinated uprising aimed at expelling the colonial overlords from their ancestral homelands. Swiftly mobilizing their forces, the Native Americans employed guerrilla tactics, seizing Spanish horses and blockading key routes leading to the colonial capital of Santa Fe, effectively isolating the northern reaches of the province from its southern counterpart. Amidst the chaos of the revolt, the Pueblos issued a bold ultimatum, demanding the immediate departure of the Spanish occupiers and the emancipation of enslaved Native Americans held in bondage by their colonial masters. Yet, despite their valiant efforts, the tide of history proved unyielding as Spanish forces rallied to quell the insurrection. In a desperate bid to reclaim their dominion, Spanish settlers and missionaries fortified their positions, bracing for the inevitable onslaught. The ensuing conflict saw a bloody clash between the opposing forces, with Spanish settlements and missions coming under siege from a determined onslaught of nearly 500 Native American warriors. Although many Spanish colonists managed to escape the fury of the Pueblo uprising, fleeing southward along the storied Camino Real, the brief interlude of Pueblo autonomy was destined to be short-lived. On September 14, 1692, the Spanish returned in force swiftly reasserting their control over Santa Fe and quashing any lingering hopes of indigenous independence.
Battle of Picacho Pass Under the command of Captain Sherrod Hunter, Confederate Rangers embarked on a daring mission in February 1862, venturing toward Tucson, Arizona, with the aim of establishing a Confederate stronghold in the western frontier. Meanwhile, Union Colonel James H. Carlton, stationed at Fort Yuma, California, led his battalion eastward in a bid to thwart Captain Hunter's advance and safeguard Union interests in the region. The convergence of these opposing forces culminated in a dramatic showdown on April 15, 1862, at Picacho Peak, located approximately 80 kilometers northwest of Tucson. Here, amidst the rugged terrain of the desert landscape, Union soldiers found themselves ensnared in a deadly ambush orchestrated by the waiting Confederate cavalry. In the ensuing chaos, the opposing armies exchanged volleys of gunfire, the echoes of battle reverberating across the arid expanse until the waning hours of the afternoon. Despite valiant efforts on both sides, the scales of fortune ultimately tipped in favor of the Confederate forces, securing a hard-fought victory in the heart of the western frontier. While the casualties incurred in this skirmish paled in comparison to the staggering toll exacted by the relentless clashes raging across the eastern theater of the Civil War, the significance of the engagement at Picacho Peak reverberated far beyond the confines of the desert sands. Indeed, the events that transpired on that fateful afternoon etched their place in history as the westernmost battle of the U.S. Civil War serving as a poignant reminder of the far-reaching impact of the conflict that divided a nation. Amidst the vast expanses of the western frontier, the clash at Picacho Peak stands as a testament to the enduring spirit of valor and sacrifice that defined the turbulent era of the Civil War. Bleeding Kansas the tumultuous chapter known as Bleeding Kansas erupted in 1854, a tempest unleashed by the seismic shifts wrought by the Kansas-Nebraska Act. This legislative upheaval overturned the delicate balance between slaveholding and free territories, igniting a powder keg of tensions that had long simmered beneath the surface of American society. In the wake of the act, fervent abolitionists from the North mobilized with zeal rallying supporters to settle the fertile lands of Kansas and tip the scales in favor of freedom. Yet, their noble intentions were met with fierce resistance from the entrenched interests of pro-slavery factions, predominantly composed of Western Missourians, who flooded across the border to thwart the encroachment of abolitionist ideals. The resulting conflagration along the Kansas-Missouri border bore witness to a harrowing spectacle of violence and bloodshed as rival factions clashed in a bitter struggle for supremacy over the destiny of Kansas territory. Amidst the chaos, the once promising landscape became a crucible of conflict, rendering governance a near impossible task as the opposing forces stubbornly refused to yield. The fractured nature of Kansas society was laid bare for all to see as the ideological chasm between pro- and anti-slavery sentiments gave rise to the formation of two separate governments vying for legitimacy within the state's borders. This fractured governance only served to exacerbate tensions, fueling a cycle of animosity and violence that seemed to defy resolution. Even as the dust settled and a semblance of order was restored with the adoption of a single constitution five years later, the scars of bleeding Kansas ran deep, serving as a haunting reminder of the human cost exacted by the fervent ideological clashes that engulfed the nation. The echoes of this turbulent era reverberated far beyond the borders of Kansas, serving as a catalyst for the simmering tensions that would ultimately erupt into the cataclysmic conflict of the Civil War. Levi's Jeans in the frenzy of the 1853 gold rush, Levi Strauss embarked on a journey westward, carving out his own path in the rugged terrain of opportunity that awaited beyond the horizon. 
Armed with a keen entrepreneurial spirit, Strauss wasted no time in establishing his presence, founding a dry goods and clothing company that would soon become synonymous with durability and innovation. Meanwhile, in the bustling town of Nevada, a tailor by the name of Jacob Davis toiled away, crafting garments from the very cloth sourced from Strauss himself. It was here that Davis stumbled upon a revolutionary method to fortify pants against the rigors of frontier life, rendering them impervious to the wear and tear inflicted by the harsh conditions of the West. Recognizing the potential of Davis's ingenious design but hindered by financial constraints, Davis penned a fateful letter to Strauss, proposing a partnership that would see their fortunes intertwined in pursuit of a shared vision. Thus, Levi Strauss and Kummer was born, a union forged in the crucible of innovation and enterprise. With their combined efforts, Strauss and Davis set about introducing their groundbreaking creation to the masses, offering their waist-high overalls to a diverse clientele of miners, lumberjacks, and farmers who traversed the untamed landscapes of the frontier. The response was nothing short of extraordinary as demand for their durable yet stylish garments soared to unprecedented heights. By 1873, Levi Strauss and Co. had firmly entrenched itself as a global phenomenon, its reach extending far beyond the boundaries of the American West. The legacy of their partnership endures as a testament to the enduring spirit of innovation and resilience that defines the American entrepreneurial ethos. The story of Levi's jeans serves as a testament to the transformative power of innovation, proving that even amidst the chaos of a changing world, the pioneering spirit of ingenuity can withstand the test of time. Banditos In the history of California, the name Joaquin Murrieta looms large as a legendary figure among Mexican-American communities his tale steeped in the tumultuous backdrop of the mid-19th century. Hailing from Mexico, Murrieta embarked on a journey to California in 1848, lured by the siren song of the gold rush and the promise of untold riches awaiting those brave enough to seek them. Yet, Murrieta's aspirations of striking it rich were swiftly dashed by the implementation of discriminatory laws such as the Foreign Miners Act, and the Greaser Act, which effectively barred Mexicans from participating in the gold mining frenzy. Faced with the stark reality of systemic oppression, Murrieta, like many others, found himself pushed to the fringes of society. In defiance of the injustices perpetrated against his people, Murrieta emerged as a symbol of resistance leading a band of outlaws in a daring campaign of retribution across the rugged landscapes of the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys. Their exploits, marked by audacious stagecoach robberies and raids on gold miners, struck fear into the hearts of those who sought to exploit the land for their own gain. The escalating tensions reached a fever pitch when the state of California issued a staggering $6,000 bounty for Murrieta's capture, dead or alive, prompting Deputy Sheriff Harry Love and a cadre of 20 California Rangers to embark on a relentless pursuit. After weeks of tireless searching, the Rangers managed to apprehend Murrieta's brother-in-law, who ultimately betrayed his kin by revealing Murrieta's hiding place. In a climactic showdown that would etch itself into California's history, Deputy Sheriff Harry Love and his rangers descended upon Murrieta's camp at the break of dawn, unleashing a barrage of gunfire that left eight bandits, including Murrieta himself, dead in its wake. Love's grisly trophy, a severed head preserved in whiskey, served as macabre proof of his triumph, securing him the coveted $6,000 reward and cementing his position yours in the Old West. Trail of Tears In the tumultuous era of 1835, the Cherokee Nation found itself at a crossroads marked by the signing of the Treaty of New Ecota. 
Under the weight of coercion and promises, approximately 100 Cherokee leaders affixed their signatures to the document, ceding vast swathes of ancestral lands east of the mighty Mississippi River. In return, they were assured compensation in the form of monetary funds, livestock, and parcels of land within the confines of Indian territory. However, the Treaty of New Dakota was met with vehement opposition from the majority of the Cherokee populace, who viewed it as a betrayal of their heritage and a usurpation of their birthright. Despite their protests, the United States government proceeded to recognize the treaty as binding, setting the stage for a harrowing chapter in Cherokee history. By the year 1838, the specter of forcible removal loomed large over the Cherokee people as President Martin Van Buren dispatched General Winfield Scott along with a formidable contingent of 7,000 soldiers to enforce their expulsion from their cherished homelands. What ensued was a campaign of terror and displacement as Cherokee villages were ransacked, their inhabitants driven from their homes at gunpoint. The infamous Trail of Tears stands as a haunting testament to the depths of human suffering wrought by this dark chapter in American history. Over the course of a grueling journey spanning more than 1,900 kilometers, thousands of Cherokee men, women, and children were subjected to unimaginable hardships. Disease, starvation, and exposure exacted a devastating toll claiming the lives of over 5,000 Cherokee souls before they reached the barren expanses of Indian territory. The Trail of Tears remains a stark reminder of the profound injustices inflicted upon indigenous peoples in the relentless pursuit of territorial expansion. Its legacy serves as a solemn vow to remember and honor the resilience of those who endured unspeakable atrocities in the name of progress. Revolution In December of 1826, Benjamin Edwards led a band of 30 men into Nacogdoches, a territory under Mexican control within the vast expanse of Texas. With grandiose ambitions, Edwards boldly proclaimed himself the ruler of the self-styled Republic of Fredonia, aiming to wrest control of the region from Mexican governance. His audacious move was fueled by hopes of garnering support from the Anglo settlers inhabiting the area. Seeking to fortify his position against potential reprisals from Mexican forces, Edwards entered into negotiations with the Cherokee, proposing a pact wherein he would cede a portion of Texas in exchange for military assistance. However, before the ink could dry on their agreement, the tide turned against Edwards as the Mexican militia swiftly descended upon Nacogdoches just six weeks later. Facing overwhelming odds and the realization that his rebellion had faltered, Edwards made a hasty retreat to the safety of the United States, abandoning his aspirations of sovereign rule over Texas. Yet the seeds of discontent sown by Edwards would eventually sprout into a more triumphant revolution. In the year 1835, Texas witnessed the stirring echoes of rebellion once again, this time culminating in the establishment of the independent Republic of Texas. This hard-fought victory paved the way for Texas to assert its autonomy on the global stage. In a historic turn of events, Texas was welcomed into the Union as the 28th state in 1845 marking a significant milestone in the tumultuous saga of America's westward expansion. The tale of Benjamin Edwards and the ill-fated Republic of Fredonia serves as a poignant reminder of the enduring struggles and aspirations that shaped the destiny of the Lone Star State. The Ghost Dance In the year 1870, the Ghost Dance a fervent Native American spiritual movement emerged with promises of a restored tribal existence. According to its beliefs, the once teeming herds of buffalo would reappear upon the plains, the departed souls would return, and a world free of white encroachment would materialize. 
This powerful vision resonated deeply, particularly among the Lakota people, and gradually spread its influence to the lands of California and Oregon. As news of the ghost dance rites rippled into the adjacent white settlements, authorities grew increasingly alarmed, perceiving the ceremonies as a potential catalyst for conflict. Fearful of a looming uprising, the U.S. government swiftly dispatched military forces to quell the dancing and apprehend prominent leaders, including the renowned Sitting Bull and Chief Bigfoot. Tragically, the attempt to detain Sitting Bull led to his untimely demise at the hands of law enforcement. Just two weeks later, a chilling culmination of tensions unfolded at the Wounded Knee Creek where members of the 7th Cavalry ruthlessly massacred Chief Bigfoot and approximately 145 of his followers. This brutal event, now etched in history as the Wounded Knee Massacre, marked a grim turning point in the West's tumultuous Indian Wars. The aftermath of Wounded Knee saw the rapid decline of the ghost dance movement among the Lakota people. Historians reflect on this harrowing episode as a poignant symbol of the West's shifting dynamics, a stark reminder of the violent clash between indigenous cultures and the relentless march of Western expansion. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.